I'm Rob Lacuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Tony winner and Emmy nominee, Judith Light. Judith, this character, Irene Smothers, great name, by the way, is so memorable. What went through your mind when you were first approached about the role and then you first read this insane script? I read the insane script. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about what we're really talking about. I mean, it is a marvelous, incredible creation. Both those characters, Apatha Murkison's and mine, Joyce and Irene are like the, they're like amazing. So what you're dealing with is getting a script that's sent to you and asking if you want to do it and you read it and you look at who wrote it, Wyatt Kane and Charlie Peppers, and you say, you're geniuses, I'm doing this. And also I had really wanted to work with Apatha. She's quite extraordinary. And I had seen her on Broadway and she's amazing. And then we got to work with this fabulous director, Lucky McGee, and it's Natasha Leone and Ryan Johnson. And it's like, it's a, it's a slam dunk and it's an incredible character. It's a no brainer. Like, I'm so glad you said that. Like you, you get that kind of role. And I looked back and thought, have they worked? Have you worked with Apatha before? You haven't. How is that possible no. after all these? I years? know. That's what I thought. And I said, wait a minute, we have to do this together. And I asked them, I said, are you sure she's going to say yes? Because that's really going to make a difference for me. And we had, you know, sometimes you meet people and you just have that instant chemistry. And that was what we had, you know. Yeah. So what do you smart most, casting? Very smart, smart casting. casting. Emmy nomination right? casting. Um, what <laughs> did you most value about her as your scene partner? Say that again. What did you most value about Apatha as your scene partner? Value and admire about her. Her well, first of all, of course, her talent. Yeah. But her I have such respect for her as a professional and her work ethic. And I mean, let's remember she was on Law and Order. She's on Chicago Med. Those shows take a lot out of you and they require a tremendous amount and you really don't have a life. And the fact that she has this incredible sense of humor and she's just smart as a whip and there was this kind of respect that I had for her because I saw her on stage and I saw her do uh, Come Back Little Sheba, uh, which was directed by a friend that we both knew, Michael Pressman. And I said, why have I never seen her on stage before? She was breath, she was just breathtaking. So those are some of the adjectives I would use. And then I knew that I was going to be really blessed to get to work with her. Yeah, and then the two of you together, oh, my God. I it's, know, delish, right? It's delicious. So let's yeah. talk about the role because I just think I haven't really seen you like this um, before. The, it, the role showcases this emotional depth required to tap into universal themes, obviously, around like loss and trauma and vengeance, and that's what I really get into. Revenge is such a powerful internal force and viscerally intense feeling, isn't it? And did you draw from that to help create this role? such a smart thing to say so smart yes absolutely no they that the desire to change something politically because you know it's not going the way you want it to go but to do it in a destructive way is sort of what we're kind of seeing right now in our world and I thought that was really an important thing to to focus on and to look at and to say, I want to do something that's going to make a difference in the world, but then to do it the way that they did it was really problematic. But you have to talk yourself into that it's the right thing to do. And I know that so many people right now in our country and all over the world talk themselves into something that they think is the right thing to do, but it's incredibly destructive. So for me, those themes were really important. I don't have that kind of bone about revenge or vengeance, but I know what it feels like to have a relationship fall apart and to be eviscerated by that um, and to be devastated by it. And what does it take to build yourself back up again? What it Also, what does it mean to be playing someone who is disabled? 
And we had this incredible first AD on the show, Gary Baisley. And Gary was really, he is, um, uh, he calls himself a quadriplegic, but he does have use of his hands, but he does, he does um, relate as a quad is what he calls it um, because of the nature of his, um, his injury. Yeah. And he watched uh, us work on that and to make sure that we were doing everything correct for, for that particular, um, for all the particular fight scenes and all of that stuff. But the, to be incapacitated for the rest of your life by someone who you thought had your back is a very devastating and painful and as I said before, eviscerating experience. So I not only understand it in my head, but I also get it in my gut. And that's where that's where that stuff lives, you know? And then I got to and then I got to kill my friend Reed Bernie. I know. We right? did a we did had we did a movie together called The Menu in yeah. Savannah, like a year, like a month. Well, it's been, it'll be two years this September. And so I love him and we got to work together again. So that was, that was great fun as well. Oh, he is so good. And uh, yeah. Uh, Isn't he good? He's so good he's to just... see you both on the menu and then you get to kill him off on this. Um, that's a treat. I like that. I know. It was a, to it was a total treat. And I told him <laughs> so. He's really, he's quite <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> But, you know, this whole vengeance aspect, I'm from Sicilian heritage, so maybe it's in my DNA, this whole vengeance thing, but um, I really, it's kind of, you should repeat this, but I kind of related to her in some ways because why wouldn't you want to just burn down the whole world after what she's been through? And um, so on, it, from that point of view, she's a little nefarious, but she's also a little funny. And I just think that's really juicy to play with that duality. What do you think? I totally agree with you um the humor is in a lot of ways what saves this so it's not just this all on full bore vengeance um have to take revenge look at how smart the writing is about the way they switch the bracelets the heart monitors and the timing of that and what we have to do at, on the trip to the zoo to get that to work. And they think they're gonna get away with it. But Charlie is really smart and she's not gonna let that happen. But I, I agree with you. I think those kinds of dynamics and situations are incredibly juicy. Remember you're dealing with Ryan Johnson. I mean, he's, he's a bloody genius. So, you know, he's got that stuff in his head. If you look at the rest of the season, all of the season, all of the shows in one way or another are incredibly um, dangerous, funny, um, crazy in this weird way. So that it's some, it's sort of like this kind of blows your, your, I hate that expression, it blows your mind. I was going to, I was going to use another word, which I don't think I can use on. <laughs> oh, you can use whatever word you like, but um, I, I just it. think it's sort of like fucking wild. It's it just, is fucking wild. Right? I could watch his stuff all day. I could watch. I know. Did you see the one with Hong Chow where she played the. I love that. That's episode so, two. And then. How, how about her? I mean, come on. Yeah. We just, we, she was in the menu too. And it's like, are you, are you kidding? You kidding me? She's, and did you see her in the whale? She's incredible. Yeah. I mean, he, there's, they so pluck, there's amazing people in it. They pluck all these people and at now everybody wants to do it. Everybody wants to do it. And it's like, I said to somebody the other day, I want to go back, but I don't know. We can't, we can't go back. We're going to prison again and we can't go back, but what a shame. you know, I'd like to I see know. her again. I'm, I must admit, I would like to see her again. You know, How about a series of those two girls? How about a series of those two girls? Wait, people, Maybe, right? let's make this happen. Um, you know, Judith, you know this, you've been working in this industry for a while now. You know, just a little bit. Some of the greatest performances on TV over the last few decades have been by actors who guest star on a the show. They come in, one and done, they knock it out of the park, and they're out. 
what do actors love about that opportunity to come in and really shine for an episode and on an established show and then later on I'm seeing you later you know I don't I, I'm not exactly clear how to answer that I you know I I'm happy with this in the one and done situation because it's so juicy as you, you know, to use your word. Um, I like those, I treasure those recurring, like I have this really great recurring role on Shining Veil vale where I play mm -hmm. Courtney Cox's really mentally troubled mother. Yeah. Um, I also get to be on uh, this wonderful show on HBO Max or whatever we're calling it these days. Um, uh, that Shining Veils on Stars and this is on, on Max. Um, Julia, about Julia Child. So I really treasure and value that kind of consistent staying in something, not necessarily all the time, but having these great writers I mean, you're talking about great writers like Chris Kaiser and Daniel Goldfarb. You're talking about a great writer like Jeff Astroff and his team. You've got these, and again, I go back to the writing. It's it's all it's all in that. That's what the that's what the that's the treasure trove. Um, and so I don't, you know, for some people they like the, you know, I'm you know, I'm gone. But I I, I like to continue with the group. I like that familial connection and it's funny I was um I ran into Natasha the other day and it was sort of like oh my god it's like old home week so that I I th there's something about this community my film television and theater community that really fills me up and I I just saw Sam Waterston today and we did a play mm -hmm. together a hundred years ago and we were it was like we never stopped talking to each other it was like we picked up right where we left off so I like that going back if I'm really busy the one and done is great because I get to go on to something else and I have to go on to something else mm -hmm. but I, I like the consistency of of a great of a great role and beautifully written yeah I hear what you're saying and you know yeah something like that you want to continue sinking your peek into it because it's just so delish um so thinking about this role there's a lot of physicality to it that I wasn't quite expecting as you've alluded to earlier and I'm thinking yeah. if I had to do what you had to do I would have done my back out and I would have been out for six weeks how the hell did you manage all of that physicality say that again that last how part did you manage all the physical aspects of the role because it that wasn't easy it's particularly you know there's a, a scene if you haven't seen it yet there's a, a couple of things in there where you're really having to scale walls and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Right. You have to be in shape. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you have it, not to be in shape. You have to stay in shape. Yeah. And I don't mean, I mean, you have to, I don't care what size you are. That's not it's it. like, if you watch the Tonys, you will see the level of physicality that all those performers have to do. And they have different body sizes and shapes whoever you are i just did something for ryan murphy last year american horror stories and we were running in the rain and the mud in malibu at a, you you have to at, look and i had a great stunt double too so you have to be prepared to do that you have to have really good core work i do yoga you have to be able to do that and then you have somebody helping you do parts that they don't feel that you I wanted to do a lot more than they let me do, but they have to be careful because of insurance. Yeah. But if if you're in shape, I mean, you look like you're in shape, you could do stuff, you can do it. Uh, I mean, you'd have to, and it's breath control and all of that stuff, but you have to be prepared. And if you take on a role like that, you have to be, you you know what's coming, you have to be prepared for it. And you prepare. And that's the beauty of being, you know, you've been around for long enough, you know you've got to be prepared for this, not just mentally, right. but physically. Mm -hmm. obviously. No. No, because if all you're doing is thinking about a role and all you're doing is it's all in your brain, it's not interesting to an audience. It's got to come from your guts and your emotions and your nobody's watching anything. They're feeling something. So you have to you have to be the feeler transmitter. Yes. I don't know I kind of how to say that, but it's like true. That. So that means if it's getting um, if she is getting under your skin like other roles does that mean when production is wrapped 
it takes a while for her to evaporate out of you? No, that's a great, such a great question. No, no. You, when you do it for long, if you're holding on to it, some things are, are a little bit harder to let go of, either because of the group you've been with, the folks you've been with, um, the, the intimacy of it, the dynamic of it. But sometimes it gets to be indulgent. It's like, just stop now. Go back mm -hmm. to your life. Yeah. And if it's your life that is the context of everything, not your career. In other words, if your life is your main point, is your main focus, then it's different. Your career falls into the life stuff. Mm -hmm. But you go back to your life and you let it go. I mean, I miss Apatha. I mean, I miss Lucky McGee. I miss Natasha. I'd like to, you know, see them or spend more time with them. But I, it, that time is over. And it's important as a human being with a particular lifespan to stay present, to be in the now. Got to be now. And if you're now, you let go of it and then you can expand. You know, it's like yeah. you use that as a, as a, a, a powerful experience, a, a, an experience that enabled you to learn something. And then you can, you can expand into other things. Yeah. So it's, it's not really for me. It's not, it's not really difficult to let it go. That's good. That's good to hear. Um, I think it well, was, but, but I notice that sometimes people hold on to it just to sort of be indulgent. Yeah. For, you don't need to. And you don't, you don't have to do that. I mean, you can let it go. Yeah, great, great expression. You can, like you that. can. Yeah. Good lesson. Um, well, Judith, on that note, I uh, wanted to congratulate you on some beautiful work on the show. And thank, thank you, you for speaking out and always being such an advocate. And um, I will ask you all my other questions about your career on our next interview. But for now, thank you for your time today. Thank you for your time. Lovely to talk to you.